Well, right now I am with David Mason from Hedgerow's Nursery in McMinnville. David, good morning. Good morning, Mike. It's nice to see you here. And thank you for tell, inviting well, me. Well, tell us, Hedgerow's is in McMinnville. Well, it's, it's about 10 miles outside of McMinnville in reality. You take, right. take the roads if you go into the coast, Highway 18, mm -hmm. and you'll see the Oregon Wine Tasting Room and the Lawrence Gallery, and at that point, we're about a mile. Okay. And there are signs on the highway blue and white O dot signs that direct you from that point. All right, and you are open? We're open Thursday through Saturday, All 10 o'clock right. until 5, all by appointment. Okay, and we'll get that information up on our website too, uh -huh. the, the hours and everything. But what I wanted David to come and show us is, you're at the Hardy Plant Society sale today, actually. That's right. All right. Yeah. Uh, from 10 to 3 today and from 10 to 3 tomorrow at the yeah. Washington County Fairplex. And I think it'd be interesting to, for people to see some of the plants that you're going to have there. Some of the plants that I've got here are the ones that are, happen to be in flower and are looking pretty. Other things won't necessarily be in flower because it's early in the season. Right. And so I just brought the pretty ones to look at today. Oh, good. And good. we can see those. Um, and yeah. to let people know that this is a free event. Absolutely free. free and party. it's run by the Hardy Plant Society who take a nice percentage from all the growers, which goes towards their educational um, programs right, and things. And grants. That's yeah. right. And yeah. it's a really good thing to, to be involved with. So hopefully there'll be some new plants here for people. I think there will be. Yeah. So tell me about these trilliums. Well, that's a, a trillium which we were given by one of our customers. It's trillium albidum. We weren't sure for a long time. We think it's probably a hybrid in, in reality, but it's performed so well for us that we, we keep now dividing it when we can. And does it stay low? It like gets this? a little taller than that in the ground, but okay. it's, we've had it in the ground for several years now and it's really been a great performer and it seems to multiply and produce more and more flowers each year. Okay, and then let's go to primulas for a minute here. You've got one here that's really yeah, that, special. That's a, a little hose in hose one. It has two sort of flowers. Oh, I see where you mean like right here. That's right. Right, okay. So there's one flower stuck inside another, it appears to be, but it's just a, a, a form of the normal Primula vulgaris. All right. And it's just a nice form, flowers for a long time. And, and, that, and this one? And that one is one of the auriculas. Now, there are a lot of auriculas that are the show auriculas. Now, th those are ones you keep in a greenhouse and you know you wouldn't put outside. This one is, is more adaptable to growing outdoors. But as you see there, I've got it in a pot, which is a great way to grow it. We brought it from England. And it's, it's a variety called Old Mustard. And All right. it's, uh, the name itself, I think, is enchanting. It has a slight fragrance. Well, you look at the color. It it's beautiful like color. Mustard. It yeah, does. It's quite pretty. Yeah. Very pretty. Yeah. And hardy. Hardy? hardy. Yeah. OK. Now, this is really interesting here. Tell me this. Now, this is a South African bulb. And it's um, one of the, there's a group of bulbs called Tulbagia. Um, they are, the roots are very, very fragrant and smell like garlic, in fact. But if you don't disturb the roots, you've got a, a very sweet fragrance. Mm -hmm. There are other forms around that have been around for a long time and, and much taller and more vigorous. This one is a tight growing one. Under polythene, it seems to stay evergreen, but out in the garden, it's absolutely fine, hardy, but it loses all its leaves in a cold winter, but it's flowering as we speak. It's one of the few things that actually is flowering outside in this group. Most and of these have been grown under okay, polythene. And since I see rocks in here, are you, this might be a rock garden thing? It would plant. be a rock garden thing, and I put the rocks in just because I like the way it looks when you have them in a pot, really. Okay. Yeah. And what about the plant you have your hand on right here? This is an Oleria, and we've been growing this for a, a number of years. It's uh, a New Zealand plant originally. Uh, but this particular one originated on the island of Tresco, mm -hmm. off the southwest coast of England. And it's just one that seems to flower its head off every year. In the ground it gets to about four feet. Okay. And uh, as long as it's in a sheltered place with fairly good drainage, it, it's a okay. good evergreen. And real quick, David, because we're almost out of time, tell yeah. me this. That's a gladiolus. All right. And most of the gladiolus, of course, the ones that you see in cut flower shops are bigger and more uh, abundant. But this one grows to about that height, 18 inches to two feet tall. And I like to grow things like this amongst grasses. Oh, very So that when grasses. they disappear in the summer, you're not aware of their presence yeah. or the lack thereof. The lack thereof, yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great, a great selection of plants. Um, we'll see you at the sale. Good. Thank you, David. Thank you. For a complete listing of all the plants you've seen and the places we've been, go to MikeDarcy.com.
There are hundreds of great reasons to visit Farmington Gardens. I'm a year-round gardener, so I always want to come and find something new. Farmington Gardens will help you create the garden of your dreams. And so when I come to Farmington Gardens, they have something every season of the year. Ideas and imagination grow at Farmington Gardens, too. I like to come here just on a nice day and wander around. When it's early spring and you, know, you can't really do any gardening outside, you can come down here and just dream. Just a short drive out Farmington Road in Aloha. Farmington Gardens, we're growing for you. Slugs are a real problem in Northwest Gardens, and if you garden, you probably know that. This is a clump of daylilies that I was dividing, and unfortunately I had not put any bait down. You can see the damage that the slugs have done to this plant. For me, the choice that I use in my own garden is Corey's Meal. I like it, and always read and follow labor directions, but you just want to put it lightly around the plants on damp soil, so evening is an ideal time. If you prefer not to use meal, there are pellets, and there's also Corey's Deadline. Look for the meta label on all Corey's products. The sun and the earth, pure, natural. Is there a better blend of organic? For your garden, there's Black Gold All Organic Potting Soil. It's 100% organic. You'll see the OMRI listing right on the bag. It's perfectly balanced with quality natural ingredients and an organic fertilizer. Unlike other brands, Black Gold contains earthworm castings, the purest form of plant food. Black Gold, your recipe for a natural garden. Sold only at local independent garden centers. For the one nearest you, log on to sungro.com. Good morning, Portland. I'm Steve Leader. And I'm Rebecca Marshall. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the 8th. Lars Larson checks in with the Rose City Sports Red. at 15 and 45 on your home of the Ducks and Blazers. Here's your Kevin station Red. for fair and balanced news. News Radio 750 KXL. Well, be sure and catch my radio show on Saturday mornings, 9 to noon on KXL, 750 on the AM dial. This particular show on Comcast will repeat again at 6 p.m. on Thursday evening. Or you can watch it any time at your leisure during the week. Just go to MikeDarcy.com on the internet and you can click on whatever segment you want to watch. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.